Praise the Lord. We're here today, my wife and I, in our house church, in the upper room of our house, as two disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we fellowship with each other and fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we do not fellowship with sinners. No, we fellowship with the Lord. Uh, this is a church. A church is for the saints. When Paul writes the letters, his epistles, and he greets the churches, he says, Paul to the saints at Corinth. Peter to the saints. Paul to the saints. The epistles are written to the saints, not to the sinners. There is a difference between saints and sinners. Sinners are of the devil. It clearly says so. John, John wrote it. First John. He that committed sin is of the devil. So we don't have those who are of the devil in our house. It's just simple as that. And that's what a church is, a congregation of believers. The church is not a building, okay? The church is not a pulpit. The church is the people, the congregation. You look up the word church in Greek in the New Testament, and the definition is the congregation. It's the congregation. So, uh, as a side note, if you're a woman and you're teaching to a congregation of believers, whether it's online or not, I have a, a woman who subscribed to my channel, and she's a teacher. And she has men that she live streams her YouTube teachings to. And the men ask her questions, and she teaches the men. And she says, well, I'm not behind a pulpit, but she is teaching the church, for the church is the congregation of believers. And these men are sitting and listening to a woman teacher. So it's all sin. It's all confusion. Hopefully she'll repent. But, you know, today the, the spirit of, of the world is strong with uh, many teachers. And even though the Bible clearly warns to uh, be not many masters, for we shall receive a greater condemnation, they don't take the warning seriously. And this is what this sermon, this teaching is about. For Jesus Christ says in John 1.43, a woman teacher, Paul says it, Paul says, I suffer not a woman to teach. And a woman should learn in silence with all subjection. And he gives the reason that Adam was first formed. And the woman came from Adam. So the woman is from the body of the man, and the body cannot teach the head. That's just a way of common sense. The head tells the leg to move. The head tells the hand to move. The head tells the foot to walk. It's the head that tells the body and teaches the body. So the body, which Paul described as the woman, Eve, taken from Adam's body, a woman cannot teach a man who is a saint in the church, the congregation of believers. The church is the congregation. If you're a woman teaching a congregation, then you are false and you need to repent because Jesus says to follow him. And Paul says, be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. And I suffer not a woman to teach the church. The woman cannot teach the congregation. If you're live streaming your YouTube videos and you have men on there and the men are asking you questions and you're teaching men, you are false. You need to repent. Well, what can I do? I want to have a ministry. What can I do, preacher? This sermon, this preaching is for you. John 1, 43. What can I do? What can I do? I'm a woman. I want to serve. I want to go out. I want to have a ministry. John 1, 43. If you're a woman, you cannot have a teaching ministry. You cannot teach other Christians. It's just that simple. A woman cannot teach the church. The pulpit is not the church. The building is not the church. The church is the congregation. The church is the gathering together of the people. If you have people gathering together on your YouTube page and you're teaching these men, you are false and you are warned that you will receive a great condemnation for you are living in sin. Sin. It is a sin for women to teach other Christian men. Let's turn. Because the Christian men are the congregation, which is the church, not the building, not the pulpit. Paul says, I suffer not a woman to teach. I suffer not a woman to teach. And Paul said, to be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. John, this teaching is for you, for we teach to observe all things whatsoever Jesus Christ commands. 
That's what the men teach, to observe all things whatsoever Jesus Christ commands. What can I do? I, I want to go out and teach. I want to go out and, and, and I, want, I want to have a ministry. I, I, want to, I want to let the world know about Jesus. I, I, want, to, I want to fulfill the, 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 the Word of God and go, go forth. Well, this sermon is for you, woman. John 143. This will tell you what to do. And it is not, number one, to teach the congregation. A woman is not to teach the congregation. John 1, 43. John chapter 1, verse 43. John chapter 1, verse 43. John 1, 43. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. Jesus Christ commands his disciples to follow him. Matthew 4, 18. That's the commandment. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. One of the commandments from Jesus is to follow him. To follow him. Matthew 4. Matthew 4, verse 18. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. Matthew 4, 18. We see, and Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee. Where was he walking? What did he do when he saw it? He went forth into Galilee, the last verse. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So Jesus was outside, walking around by the Sea of Galilee, and he made disciples. And he made disciples. And what did he tell them? He said, he commanded them to follow him. Follow me, he said. Let's go back to John 143. John 143. Jesus was outside in Galilee, walking around by the sea. John chapter 1, verse 43. John 143, the next day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and said unto him, Follow me. So Jesus went forth into Galilee and he was walking around the Sea of Galilee and he was outside making disciples. John 21, verse 22. John chapter 21, verse 22. John chapter 21, verse 22. And what did he tell those disciples to do? To follow him. To follow him. Him, John 21, verse 22. John 21, verse 22. Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Don't worry about what is that man going to do or what's that man going to do. What is that to you? Jesus says, Follow thou me. Follow Jesus. Doesn't matter what the other men's gift are, what the other ministry is. Jesus says, Follow Jesus him. And he said it to Peter. Peter saying, seeing him say it to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? What is that to you? Jesus says, follow thou me. John, sorry, Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Let's turn. Matthew 16. And we know that Peter did follow Jesus and he followed him to the death. Peter was a martyr. Matthew 16 verse 21. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. Find it here. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. Matthew 16, verse 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Bar, far, Be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Peter wanted to do what he wanted to do. 
A woman teacher wants to do what she wants to do, but she's not following Jesus. No, a woman cannot teach a congregation of Christian men and Christians. A woman is not to teach the congregation, which is the church. Look it up. Look it up in Strong's Greek Dictionary if you have to. Do a word search on church and look up the definition. It is the congregation. I suffer not a woman to teach the congregation of men. And that's just how it is. What can I do? What can I do if I'm a woman? Follow me. Lose your life for Jesus' sake. Don't stay in the same sin that you're in. For James warns you that there will be a condemnation for teachers who are false. And Peter warns also, Brethren, be not many masters, for we shall receive the greater condemnation. For there is a condemnation to false teachers who teach, but are not supposed to teach, do not have the gift of the Holy Ghost of teaching, have not been called to teach, they have been called to another ministry, and they don't know it because they desire to be a teacher. But James says, be not many masters. Don't desire to be a teacher unless you absolutely have no choice but to be a teacher because the Holy Ghost commanded you to. That is your ministry, a teaching ministry. A woman cannot have a teaching ministry. Let's turn. What can a woman do? Jesus says, follow me. Lose your life for my sake. Acts 20, verse 23. Acts 20, verse 23. Acts chapter 20, verse 23. Acts chapter 20, verse 23. Acts 20, verse 23. Say, the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that the bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, that I may finish the course with joy and the ministry which I have received in the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. What can a woman do? He can, she can be a follower of Jesus by being a follower of Paul. For Paul said, Be ye followers together with me, even as I am of Christ. What can a woman do? She can testify the gospel of the grace of God. Going forth. Going forth not to a congregation of believers, but going forth to the lost. Where are the lost? The lost are outside around the Sea of Galilee. They're outside in the highways. They're outside in the hedges. The lost are in the streets. This is the ministry of a woman to go forth and testify of Jesus, the gospel. The woman can testify of Jesus if she has a desire to speak the words of life. But a woman cannot teach the church. The woman can teach the lost, but not the church. The woman can testify of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but she cannot teach the congregation. This is sin. Paul said, Be ye followers together of me. Gal uh, Galatians 1 1. Galatians 1 1. Galatians chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. You don't need men to tell you to go. You don't need me to tell you to go. All you have to do is obey Jesus who says, follow me. You need God to tell you. Paul says he's sent by God. Paul, an apostle, not of men. He's not an apostle of men. He's not an apostle even by men. Men did not make Paul an apostle, but Jesus Christ did. Jesus Christ and God the Father commanded Paul to testify the gospel. Romans 1.1 1, 1. This is all from God, but you've got to have faith in God to follow Jesus. Whosoever shall gain his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world, but lose his own soul? Follow me, Jesus says. Romans 1, 1. Jesus is the one who sends. Romans chapter 1, verse 1. Romans 1, 1. 
Romans chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Paul is separated from the world for what? To preach the gospel to them, to testify of the gospel of Christ, to testify of Jesus Christ to the lost, separated from the world to go forth, walking around, and preach and testify the gospel to the lost. 1 Timothy 1, 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11. I'm sorry. 1 Timothy 1.11. 1 Timothy 1, verse 11. 1 Timothy 1.11. Let me find it here. 1 Timothy 1.11. 1 Timothy 1.11. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. You'll have faith in Jesus Christ. He'll trust you with the gospel. You don't have to have any other ministry except the ministry of testifying the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost. Won't you trust Jesus? Jesus will trust you if you'll trust him. If you'll follow Jesus Christ, he'll trust you with the gospel. For he trusted Paul, a murderer. He can certainly trust you to go and testify the gospel to the lost. This is a ministry. Titus 1, 3. Titus chapter 1, verse 3. Titus chapter 1, verse 3. And this is not only for the women. This is for everybody. This is for all Christians. A Christian is what? A disciple of Jesus Christ. That's what the word Christian means. Disciple. The disciples were called Christians. Followers of Jesus. Because Jesus says, follow me. Follow me. This is what Jesus says. Follow me. Do what Jesus did. Do what Jesus did according to your ability that he gives you, that he entrusts you with. Titus 1, 3. Titus chapter 1, verse 3. Titus chapter 1, verse 3. But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Christians are commanded to preach. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, you don't have to stand there and deliver a sermon on the street corner as loud as you can like I do. But you are called to go out and to preach. To preach means to deliver the testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost. To evangelize the lost out in the streets. You can walk up to a person and you can ask them how their soul is doing today. And if their soul is doing fine, then you can ask them more questions. And you can see if they're a, if they're a true believer or not. If they're a sinner, you can rebuke their sin, for this is wisdom. And this is the ministry of a Christian. A Christian does what Jesus Christ does. A Christian does what this Bible tells them to do. And if the Bible says that I suffer not a woman to teach, well, you better make sure that you're not teaching. You're not teaching the congregation, but you can definitely go out and teach the lost and testify to them all the words of this life to the lost. This is an evangelistic ministry. This is evangelism. This is publishing the gospel. That is the duty of every Christian, whether it's the woman who goes and sits at a bus stop and talks to another lost person out in the street, whether it's a woman who goes out and tries to help the homeless and feeds them uh, food while feeding them the gospel, this is a ministry. But the ministry is out in the streets. The disciples of Jesus Christ went about preaching everywhere, everywhere to the lost. Not preaching to a congregation of other Christians, not having Christian men ask them questions if they're a woman, a woman cannot teach men. A woman cannot teach Christian men. But a woman can have wisdom and teach the lost. All the things that she knows about Jesus Christ. Testifying the gospel to them. This is a ministry and we all should do it whether or not we have other ministries, whether or not we're pastors, or whether or not we have ministries of helps and tongues and all of these things, but we all must go out and win the lost following Jesus. Jesus says, follow me. This is the duty of a Christian. 
This is the duty of a disciple of Jesus Christ, is to follow Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 4.10 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10 1 Timothy 4.10 For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Because we trust in the living God, who says, follow me, and we trust him. We trust him to go and do what he says. He tells his disciples to follow me, and we trust him. If you don't trust Jesus, then you'll stay inside. But if you trust Jesus, then you'll go forth to the Sea of Galilee, and you'll tell men to follow Jesus, just as Jesus did. You'll go forth into the highways and you'll tell men to follow Jesus because this is what Jesus did. And you're his disciple. Whether or not you're a woman or a man, women can tell people to follow Jesus. But women cannot teach other Christian men. Let's turn. Let's turn. 2 Timothy, I'm sorry, Hebrews 13, 13. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 13. Hebrews 13, 13. And I hope this woman sees this, and I hope she repents. I hope she repent, repents. Well, Hebrews 13, 13. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. Who is he? Who's Paul talking about here? Wherefore, verse 12, Hebrews 13, 12. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. He went outside, he went outside the four walls, and he suffered. And Paul writes, Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. Get up and get out into the world and bear his reproach. This is a disciple of Jesus Christ, obeying Jesus Christ, who says, Follow me. 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. My wife is, has a family in, in uh, northeastern Thailand. And this family is in a village. And their village is surrounded by Buddhists everywhere. There's Buddhists all over the place. Everyone's a Buddhist almost. And my wife would send my, or my family-in-law, her family, my wife would send them tracts and Gospels, uh, John and Romans, I think. I'm not quite sure if they, if they got a lot of those. But anyway, she would send them tracks and boxes, big boxes of tracks. And my wife's little niece, 10 years old, she went out and she passed out tracks. And her father did also, out in a village, in the middle of northeastern, northeastern Thailand, amongst the rice fields. And if they can do it, then you have no excuse. You have no excuse because this is a Christian. This is a Christian. 1 Peter, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy 3, verse 10. 2 Timothy 3, verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. Thou hast known my manner of life, Paul says. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. You go out and you get persecuted. Let's read 1 Peter 2, verse 20. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. We read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. For what glory is it if, when you be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? But if, when you do well, you suffer for it, you take it patiently. This is acceptable to, with God. For even hereunto were ye called. Why were we called? Why were we called as Christians? Jesus made disciples. He made Christians. Jesus made Christians, and Jesus called, Follow me. For hereunto were ye called. This is the calling. What's the reason, Peter? This is the reason. For hereunto were ye called. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps who did no sin neither was guile found in his mouth who when he was reviled reviled not again when he suffered he threatened not 
but committed himself to him that judges righteously. For, and who, uh, but committed himself to him that judges righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin. And this is the problem here. Many are not dead to sin. So they can't go out and rebuke and preach and testify what Jesus Christ has done for them because Jesus Christ hasn't done anything for them because they're still sinners. So they can't go out and testify the gospel because they don't have it in here because they're not dead to sin. They're not following Christ's example who did no sin, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps who did no sin because they can't go out and rebuke sin. They can't go out and love their neighbor because they'd be a hypocrite and they know it. They can't go out there and get persecuted for righteousness sake because they're not righteous. Jesus Christ rebukes them in Matthew 7 when he says that thou hypocrite, First, what are, what are you to judge your brother? You can't judge your brother if you're a hypocrite, if you're a sinner. Because you have to remove the beam from your own eye first, and then you can see clearly to remove the mote from your brother's eye. You can go around, you, you can walk out, you don't have to be a hypocrite. You can go out and you can love your neighbor as yourself. You can rebuke your neighbor's sin. For to love your neighbor is to rebuke their sin. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart, but thou shalt anywise rebuke thy neighbor, and not suffer sin against them, not suffer sin upon them. For I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord. This is Leviticus 19, 17 verse 18. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's what it means. To love your neighbor as yourself is to see your neighbor suffering in sin and to rebuke their sin. But you can't rebuke their sin until you remove the beam from your own eye first or you'll be a hypocrite and a hypocrite will not come before God. You have to be dead to sins. You have to be dead to sins. You have to have the testimony of the gospel. You have to follow in Jesus' steps who did no sin. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Verse 25, 1 Peter 2, 25, For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. You were as sheep going astray, you had turned every one to your own way, and now you have returned to the shepherd and bishop of your souls, who did no sin, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Follow me, Jesus says. Hebrews 13, verse 20, Hebrews 13, 20, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20, Hebrews 13, 20, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus Christ make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Let's turn. Let's turn. Mark, I'm sorry, Matthew 28, 20. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Matthew 28, verse 20. Matthew 28, verse 20 teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Jesus says to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. To go, to teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And when they obey that, they become a saint. And if you're a woman, there's no more teaching for you. A woman doesn't teach the saints. Let's turn. But a woman can teach the lost. Go ye therefore teaching them. Teaching them and testifying to them the gospel of the grace of God. For wisdom crieth out. She lifts up her voice. Let's turn. Proverbs, Proverbs 8. Proverbs chapter 8. Let me find it here, Proverbs chapter 8. We're going to see the description of a woman, of a godly woman. Let's read chapter 9 first. Proverbs 9, 1. Wisdom hath builded her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beasts. She hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. She hath sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, this is the key verse here, that telling you that women can go forth. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither, 
As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish, and live, and go in the way of understanding. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame, and he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. So this is a wise woman. Wisdom. We see in verse 4, she says, Whoso is simple, let him turn him hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, verse 4, Whoso is simple, let him turn him hither. This is the cry of the wise woman. And they'll say, well, this is a, just a personification. This is just poetry. Well, we see that this, we go down to the verse 13. This is a foolish woman. Now, they all agree that this is a description of a foolish woman, that this is a real woman. A foolish woman is clamorous, verse 13. She is simple and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house, on a seat in the high places of the city, to call passengers who go right on their ways. Now here's the key verse again, that links up a foolish wisdom, I mean a foolish woman, with the wise woman. This links the two together, showing that these are real women. Verse 16, Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither, the foolish woman says. Go up to verse 4, the wise woman says, Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. So we have the comparison between a foolish woman and a wise woman. And the wise woman rebukes the wicked. The wise woman tells them to forsake the foolish. The wise woman gives instruction to the wise man and he will be wiser. She teaches the just man and he will increase in learning. So these are all descriptions of what a wise woman does. If a wise woman tries to teach a scorner, she's going to get a blot. That just means that there's an unbeliever out there who won't accept her, won't accept her teaching out there, a lost unbeliever. But if there's someone out there who's truly a just man in his heart, just where he's fair to people, and you know he tries to do good before God, and, but he doesn't know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if the woman teaches that man, then the man will be increased in knowledge. This is a... This is someone who will be benefited by the, by the woman teaching them. But the foolish woman says, Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith unto him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. My wife goes out into the streets, and when you have men who come up to her and ask her what she's doing, there will be two different types of men. There will be a scorner, and then there'll be one who is just. And the just man will sit and listen to her and will hear what she has to say. He's lost. He doesn't know that, you know, he doesn't know about Jesus so much. He's, he's, he's living in the world, but he tries to do good. He's not a wicked devil where he's just an evil man, a scorner who hates God. But there are some who are haters of God. And when my wife tries to rebuke them, they scorn her. But a just man who will hear instruction, a wise man, he will be wiser. Teach a just man, he'll increase in learning. These are the ones the women can help. The women can help out in the street to the lost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever Jesus Christ commands. And if they do get born again and they do become a saint, then it's the job of the men to continue in teaching those saints, not the job of the woman. The woman does not teach the congregation. The woman teaches the lost. Let's turn. Let's turn. Mark 16, 20. Mark 16, 20. And that's the kicker. The kicker is in Matthew 28, 20, that we teach to observe all things whatsoever, has, whatsoever Jesus Christ has commanded. And that's the kicker. That's what separates us from the true teachers and the false teachers. The true teachers of Jesus Christ will teach you to observe all things whatsoever Jesus Christ has commanded you. The false teachers want nothing to do with that kind of learning. The false teachers want nothing to do with trying to go and teach to observe all things whatsoever Jesus Christ commands because they don't do it themselves, because they have not been dead to sin. 
They have not had the gospel of Jesus Christ has not done anything for them. They don't have the testimony of the gospel. All they are are professors. They're professors, but they will not teach to observe all things whatsoever Jesus Christ commands because that would make them a hypocrite and they know it. But those who are dead to sin, who follow Jesus Christ, who have the gospel testimony in their life, will teach to observe all things whatsoever Jesus Christ commands. And that's the separation there. That's the holiness. Mark, that's what Paul was talking about when he said, I'm separated to the gospel. Mark 16, 20. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Mark 16, verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. There's that word again. They went forth. They went forth outside the camp. Jesus went forth to Galilee. Jesus called his disciples outside at the Sea of Galilee. And the disciples went forth preaching everywhere. Let's turn. And the Lord was working with them because the Lord sent them. Let's turn, because they had faith to follow Jesus. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. I have planted Apollo's water, but God gave the increase. So that neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Every man will receive his own reward according to his own labor. And Jesus says, let's go to John 4, 35. John chapter 4, verse 35. John chapter 4, verse 35. John 4, 35. John chapter 4, verse 35. John 4, 35. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Do you think that women don't have a role to play in the harvest? No, when I was in Thailand, it was all women out there harvesting the rice. Women can harvest. And that's just a fact of life. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I send you to reap that whereupon ye bestow no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. Speaking of the prophets, the prophets of old. The prophets of old labored, and we Christians are entered into their labor. Let's turn. Jeremiah 44, 4. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 4. Prophets and prophetesses. There are prophetesses. Let's turn. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 44, 4. Let me find it here. Jeremiah 44, 4. Jeremiah 44, verse 4. Let me find it. There it is. Jeremiah 44, 4. Howbeit I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear to turn from their wickedness, to burn no incense unto other gods. Oh, that is a great problem today, that we don't have people out there telling other people to turn from their wickedness and to turn to Jesus Christ. 200 million Christians in this country profess. A church on every corner. YouTube full of teachers of Christianity, so-called. YouTube full of teachers. This country has 200 million professed Christians, but not another person out there in the streets well, I, that I've seen in the past four years almost telling others to repent. If there was 200 million Christians, and 50 states in America, that would be 4 million Christians for each state. There would be 4 million Christians here in Virginia. And how come there hasn't even been one out here preaching in Virginia to the lost publicly? 
Why have not even one Christian gone forth? Only my wife and I that I've seen. In Virginia, one out of four million, two, excuse me, my wife and I, two out of four million Christians that I've seen. Now, I profess that I've not been all over Virginia, but you get the picture here. Four million Christians on average per, per state, but not hardly any of them following Jesus, following Paul. They sit in the camp, they stay behind the doors, and they do not go forth bearing his reproach. They stay inside, they post videos on YouTube, but they will not obey Jesus Christ. This is foolishness. Zechariah 7.7 7. Zechariah 7.7 7. Zechariah 7 verse 7 Zechariah 7 verse 7 Should ye not hear the words which the Lord hath cried by the former prophets when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity and the cities thereof round about her when men inhabited the south and the plain the words of the prophets, the former, those who labored before the Christians came upon the scene. No, the words of the former prophets, they preached that Jesus would come. They preached that men would turn one day. And this is the labor that we enter into. They set it up for us, and we now fulfill it. We have had a stony heart become a fleshly heart, fulfilling prophecy. The fleshly heart is full of grace, which is charis. Charis is a heart condition, not only a unmerited favor as it was in the Old Testament, but now grace in the New Testament is described as a change of heart. A change of heart. That's grace. A woman yesterday came up to my wife. When my wife came up to her when we were out preaching, and my wife tried to give her a gospel tract, and the woman very despisingly, no, 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 no. She walked away from my wife. As she was walking away, she lifted up her tattoo, and she said, Saved by grace, in a confrontational spirit with my wife, she has no grace. For grace teaches that you should love your brethren. And we know that we've passed from death unto life when we love the brethren. For grace is charis, which is divine reflection of love in the heart. This is New Testament grace. If you don't have it, you're not saved by grace. If you don't have grace to go forth and preach to the lost, where is your grace? For they love, sinners love those who love themselves. What grace have they? What thank have they? That word thank is charis. It's the same word grace, which is why we say thank you. And the Spanish people say gracias. Grace and thank, which is why some people say, let's give thanks for dinner tonight. And some people say, let's say grace for dinner tonight. It's the same thing. What thank have ye that Jesus Christ saved you? You won't even go out and tell others. This is not grace. Ezekiel 18. What do I tell them, preacher? You tell them the same thing that the former prophets labored for. We enter into their labors. Ezekiel 18, verse 30. Ezekiel 18, verse 30. Ezekiel 18, verse 30. Ezekiel 18, thir verse 30. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity will not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves, and live ye a new heart. Grace, go forth, turn from your wickedness. Repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. This is a Christian. Let's turn, full of thank, full of charis, full of grace. Let's turn, 2 Peter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Turn you from your transgressions. Repent and believe the gospel. Follow me. 
Go thou and preach the kingdom of God. 1 Timothy 1, 15. 1 Timothy 1, verse 15. 1 Timothy 1, 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me, Paul writes, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Following Paul as the pattern. Paul who repented. Paul who had a vision. Paul who was blinded by the light of Jesus Christ. Who had a vision. And Paul went and labored more abundantly than they all because he was full of grace. Because the Lord had saved him, the chief of sinners. Luke 7, 44. Luke 7, verse 44. Luke 7, verse 44. Luke chapter 7, verse 44. Here's grace. We have another example of grace. Luke 7, 44. Luke 7, 44. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman, Jesus says? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water. For my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet, Jesus says. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And she was full of grace, thankful that Jesus was there. She was thankful. She kissed him and washed his feet, anointed his hair with oil, tears flowing down her face. She loved much because she was forgiven much. She had much grace. Where is your grace? Jesus says, if ye love me, keep my commandments. Follow me. I pray that you will. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Let's sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creature here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord.